Today we're going to be going over the second video um, for Go Open NC for getting started for the 2021 school year. This is Pam Batchelor with the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, Digital Teaching and Learning. I'm excited to welcome you back as we continue to explore Go Open NC. We're going to be looking at hubs today as well as how you can evaluate resources and also how you can add to the platform, uh, become a contributor. Uh, so if you'd like to join us on our presentation, you can go into your URL of your internet browser and type in bit.ly forward slash launch go open and see web and that'll bring up our slide deck um, and you can follow along with me uh, during the presentation. So just a reminder of how we get to go open and see go open and see is our open education resources platform. Um, in North Carolina, you can get to it either from the link on this slide, go opennc.oercommons.org, or you can get to it from the NC Ed Cloud. Um, we do have the Go Open NC single sign-on. Just look for the little North Carolina symbol on your NC Ed Cloud, um, and you will be able to go right to the platform. So we're going to take a look at hubs. Uh, we're going to start by looking at all the hubs that we have. Um, and then we're also going to be talking a little bit about some of the hubs that we here have in development. And then we're going to look at some of the features of a hub. So what does a hub do on Go Open NC? So we'll look at collections, uh, groups, information, and videos. So those are all features of a hub. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the platform. And when you're on the uh, Go Open NC homepage, hubs, you'll see in the navigation at top. You'll see um, my hubs if you are a member of any hubs. Um, and then you'll also see featured hubs over here. And then if you click on see all hubs, you will see what we currently have available. Um, so we have our hubs where specific topics or um, even in a couple of instances here, public school units have come together to create a hub where they've combined collections along with information, videos, um, and groups, all right? So we have a beginning teacher support hub. We have a hub for global education. Um, Johnston County actually put together their own hub um, with resources that they have curated. We have our OER professional learning hub. So this is a lot of the resources that are in our toolkit are also in our professional learning. We have a project-based learning. Um, we have a school library media hub. Um, we have the STEM literacy hub. Uh, tools for NC teachers, which are those math resources um, for middle, um, I'm sorry, elementary, I think through sixth grade. And then we have our remote learning resources hub, right, where we have um, put together a lot of resources that might be helpful for this coming year where we're in a hybrid situation um, where we might have some learning going on at home as well as face to face. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the global education hub just to kind of show you what a hub can look like right. Um, so we have information and content. Uh, we also have a Twitter feed here about global education. And then we have a little video spotlight of a global school. So this is a North Carolina um, de designated global school. So global education, you know, we have both global schools that can go through the designation process from NCDPI, as well as we have the Global Educator Digital Badge Program, which educators can earn. And you'll notice there's actually a collection here of lesson plans from our educators that have gone through the digital badge um, and earned their badge um, and they've submitted lesson plans as part of their earning of that global educator status. Um, so we can click on that and you'll actually see that's a nice collection of 355 lesson plans. A lot of these are interdisciplinary, um, good stuff, right? So our hubs are really a good place to come if you're looking for specific topics um, and you want a kind of more of a curated collection for you, right? Instead of just doing a general search, I'm really interested in project-based learning and I can go over here and look at the about section of the hub. There's a project-based learning connection group. So if I'm interested in connecting with other educators, 
I can uh, click on that group and join. And then there's also some resources here, right? So we have um, a PBL curriculum review rubric, right? And that we can use to look at uh, PBL resources. So just a nice collection of things. So I encourage you to go through the different hubs and look at those topics um, based on what your interest is and what your um, background is and uh, explore, right? We do have some more hubs that are in development right now. I'm excited. We're going to be having a digital learning uh, standards hub for our upcoming digital learning standards that are going to be implemented this year for students. And then we also have a culturally relevant teaching hub that is in finalization works as well to look at lesson planning and resources and teaching from a culturally relevant perspective. Um, so very excited about those two hubs. They will be launching um, before um, Labor Day. So very excited to welcome those in August uh, to our hubs. All right, so we'll go back to our presentation. That kind of is an overview of what is a hub. And now we're gonna look at authoring. Right, so this is how you become a contributor to Go Open NC. So if you do this search after our first video, and you know maybe there was only a few resources for your particular lesson, um, you know particular areas that you teach or courses you teach, um, please don't be discouraged. Uh, Go Open NC launched in December of 2019, so it's still a very um, new platform and we want you to encourage you that if you don't see a lot of resources please share some of your own right that's that's the only way we're going to grow um, is that you know we have educators who are encouraged and share um, some of their own resources it helps encourage and share other people's resources so there are two main ways that you can author on our platform. Um, so let's say you already know of a good resource, right? You already know of a great set of lesson plans online um, and you know that they are open education resources. Maybe they have that Creative Commons uh, licensing already applied to them. Then you can actually submit the link to where that resource lives and add some information about it and it will become part of Go Open NC. The other option is if you have your own content that you would like to add to the platform and license yourself. Um, and so we do have um, a link here that imports in from Google or OneDrive. So if you are already have kind of a lesson plan in either you know, Google Docs or maybe you have it in the Microsoft OneDrive as a Word doc, you can actually import that content directly um, into our platform and uh, makes it real nice and simple. So we're going to take a few minutes to look at both of these options, right? So we're going to look at submit a resource first, and then we're going to dig into how you can uh, create your own OER. All right, so I'm going to go back over to the platform, and you'll notice there's this green um, OER button in your navigation. And again, it gives you these two options. So open author, that is for if you have your own resources that you want to add. And then submit from web is if you know of other good resources that are um, openly licensed. All right, so we can click on add link. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask me um, to for the URL. So first I'm going to go up here and I'm going to find something. All right, so I found this lesson plan from NASA about exercising in space. And I'd like to go ahead and submit that um, to add to go open and see. Um, so just a key, just a note. Um, so a lot of things that are made by the government are actually public domain. Um, so that means that they're free to add, they're openly uh, licensed. And so this particular lesson plan um, is from the government from NASA and it's um, openly licensed. And so just you know, note that you want to make sure you start with before you add a link uh, to go up and then see that you want to make sure it's openly licensed. Not every resource that NASA has, because NASA has several partners, um, are openly licensed, but this particular one is. Um, and so that's just something that you kind of have to 
um, look through. Um, usually in the bottom of the website, there's like a privacy policy or um, a communications policy, and it kind of tells you what exactly the rights are uh, for sharing. So to get started, the first thing that when you go to add a um, add OER and submit a link, it's going to ask you what the link is. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to get the link to this lesson plan. And so I'm going to go ahead and continue. And so it's going to pull in some of the information. So um, it's going to pull in the name um, of the lesson plan. So I'm just going to add um, NASA lesson through math. All right, and then we can actually um, go and look through this information here. And I'm going to copy and paste because that is taking the description from the website right into here. All right, and then we're going to add attribution, of course, to this um, lesson. So we're going to type in NASA. And then the conditions of use, since this is a government resource, it's public domain, right? And then we can go down here and we're going to select our subject areas. So this is a math resource. And it said algebra. Um, this is a lesson plan. Or lesson. And time required is not required, um, it's not a required attribute. Um, media formats, so this is um, a downloadable doc, All right? Education standards, All right? So we're going to go in through here and select our North Carolina standards, right? So this was high school, a math one algebra. And then alignment tag, right? So we have to look back at the resource. And so the resource says that students will um, calculate slope, um, determine independent variables, solve linear equations, and create tables. Okay, so I'm going to align this. and say add selected tag, you can add multiples. Um, so maybe if I thought that if I go down here, and This one, just a note that you're always going to want to make sure you very carefully look at these. Uh, I am not a math background, so I am not 100% sure of these alignments. I would definitely want to have, um, a, you know, a math person come back behind me and make sure that this content is aligned correctly. Um, but that is the process. Uh, so um, you go through and you add your standards. You need to add at least one standard in order for it to allow you to submit it to go open and see your education levels, obviously this is high school um, grades. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pick uh, ninth and 10th grade. Languages, so this is in English. Um, if it had any accessibility, I didn't see any, um, you could do that. And then lastly, you have to agree to the terms, right? That you have um, selected your standards correctly. You understand that, you know, this is a, openly licensed resource and then we're going to click on continue and it's going to give us a little preview of what we have put in there right so it's going to take a it took an image there from the website 
and then I can submit it for review and then it's going to go through um, the review process, right? So here is this resource and it's now submitted into Go Open and See, right? Once it's approved. All right, so that's one way. That's one way to add things. So the other way is to go back through Add OER and go through Open Author, right? So this is our way if we already have um, great things that we want to share and you do have great things that you want to share. Everybody does. I promise there's something that you've created that is worth sharing on our microsite. All right, so I'm going to just um, give the, call this a reflection. Um, template. All right, you can add a title image or not. You don't have to, but if you do, it is nice to add an image if you have it. Um, and then your section name, um, I'm just going to call this reflection template. And then right in here, you have a, you know, your normal main content box um, where you can definitely type, um, you can insert, we do have the equation editor for math, you can put in videos, um, tables, um, you know, so pictures, images, um, there is an accessibility checker on here, which I encourage you to use at the end when you've added your content, it will look over your content for any issues that could be um, for someone who is, um, you know, needs accessibility on the website, or maybe there's an image that you uploaded doesn't have an alt tag, the accessibility checker will help you uh, find any issues. I'm going to go ahead and look at importing from my Google Drive because I already have a lesson plan that I'd like to go ahead and import, or actually it's a student reflection uh, template. If this is your first time, clicking on that import from Drive or Microsoft, it will ask you to authorize your account. Um, so since this is uh, something that I've already uh, done before, it didn't ask me, but just let you know, and you have to authorize it. And so I selected my document, and it went ahead and brought, them, brought that information in. Right, so using the um, five E's, I've created this little student reflection template, right? And um, we can go in and add additional resources. So maybe there is a, um, you can either use upload resources, uh, to, if there's like a PDF or maybe a map or something that you want to attach to your lesson, you can definitely do that. Um, you can also add links. So maybe if there's a, a journal article or something that you want um, folks to, um, you know, be able to another resource, a, a music clip or something like that, you can add links to it. Um, one question I do get a lot when I'm talking about adding OER is, is it okay to add um, OER to something that is not openly licensed? So say, for example, um, in our class, we're reading Charlotte's Web, right? So the book itself, Charlotte's Web, is not an open educational resource, right? But the lesson plan or maybe the guided reading template that I created for my students to go along with their reading, that is something that I could put a Creative Commons license to, right? So you would just want to be very clear in when you put in the description what's OER and what's not, right? So it's totally fine and we would love to have your templates or um, activities that you do for any novels or book studies or things in your class. Maybe if you watch um, a certain film um, in your class and you have resources to go along with that, those kinds of things are perfectly fine to add to Go Open and see. You just want to be explicit in the description and say um, this is a lesson plan or whatever it is that accompanies this um, novel or this film or this um, music work, you know, so that, that way you're very clear that the part, the content that you're adding to go open and see is openly licensed because you're going to apply a Creative Commons license to it, but it 
refers to something else that's not openly licensed. And so just be very clear about that relationship, but we definitely still want um, you to feel free like that you can add those resources to go open and see because they're definitely very valuable and useful uh, for others. And we know that not everything that we use to teach is going to be open educational resources. Maybe one day, hopefully, but not right now. Okay, so you can add resources, um, files that you, maybe you want to upload if there's a handout for students, um, and then click on save, and that'll add additional resources. There's instructor notes. Um, so if you wanted to add specific teacher notes, you could. You can add multiple sections. So if this is maybe, you know, not just an individual resource, but maybe you have a, an instructional unit that has five lesson plans in it, you can definitely add multiple sections. So, you know, this is lesson plan one, lesson plan two, uh, and go through and so on and so forth. There's no limit to how many you can add. In the next step, we're gonna go through and describe the resource. So this is what is gonna come up as that overview when someone searches for it. And here is where you need to be explicit if this text or um, this lesson plan accompanies material that is not openly licensed, right? So, you know, lesson plan uh, for Charlotte's Web. I designed this lesson plan to accompany the text. Okay, um, and then this is where you build your own license, right? So just like I talked about the Creative Commons licenses in our first video, um, as the author of this content, you choose the license um, that you would like to use. Um, now, one thing to think about is that if there's any pieces of your work that you have um, that are, you know, maybe you have an image in there um, and that image is a Creative Commons image, but it has a license that says non-commercial, right? Then the license that you choose for your lesson plan also needs to be non-commercial, right? We need to make sure that we're honoring um, all the parts of our resource, right? And so if you use something that has a Creative Commons license, then the Creative Commons license that you apply to your whole work needs to include um, whatever terms are on those licenses to be compatible, right? So I'm going to click on uh, the non-commercial attribution, right? So that's my CC license. Um, with the attribution to me and then also non-commercial because I don't want to make money off of it. Um, and then of course you go through the same kind of steps as you did um, for, you know, so we're going to, you know, go through, maybe I'll put upper primary material types. Lesson English standards. Right, so literature. Okay, um, same steps. You can add multiple um, standards, you can add multiple content areas. Uh, just go through and add and then we have to click on the I agree and then we publish all right so one thing to note that's a little different is that with the add OER when you go through open author once you click on publish it actually is published there's no review step um, and that kind of brings us up to why there's no review step. Um, there's no review step because it's part of our open educational community of practice that we all um, contribute to the platform in either resources or by ratings and evaluations, right? So 
obviously what I just put in here is just a sample. It's not really something I would actually publish, so I'm not publishing it. Um, but this is just to show you how to use the platform to add your own materials, right? Um, but if I go in and I'm going to search for, maybe I will search and see if there's anything in here for Charlotte's Web. All right, so here's a resource about Charlotte's Web, right? I can go ahead and give it that star reading. I can also come down here and leave a comment, or I can even go over here and evaluate, right? So we talked a little bit briefly in the last video about that North Carolina quality rubric. It is really up to all of us as a community to look at the resources that are on Google Open NC and be constantly evaluating them, whether we're leaving comments, whether we're doing the star ratings, um, whether we're coming over here and giving a full evaluation, um, you know, to look at, you know, is the instruction focused, engaging, and informative? Is the content accurate, adequate, and appropriate? Um, are the technology features purposeful, reliable, and accessible? And is the design of the resource motivating, clear, and user-friendly? Right, so we should be always looking at our curriculum from that lens of how we can improve it. Is it um, is it appropriate? Is it responsive? Um, is it, you know, meeting the needs? Does it meet the standards, um, the verbs and the nouns and the standards? You know, is it really engaging students in high quality, rigorous work? Um, and so your evaluations and your comments on these resources are really invaluable. Um, so I encourage you to go through and look through your critical lens, right? So you know, in these examples, I did things that were outside of my, uh, you know, curricular knowledge, but I go through and I look at the social studies resources and I pick them apart, right? And I want you to do that. Um, I want you to, to feel empowered to go in here, to go open and see and make it a better place, right? Make it so that way the resources that are really good float to the top. Um, add your own resources as you feel comfortable um, and then know that you know, this is a continuous growth process. Um, so if you have any questions or want to follow up, um, I do have a couple more slides just to wrap things up for the second video. Um, we do base everything off of the care framework, right? And that's something that is me, the company that um, we, partner, we partner with in North Carolina for our microsite. Um, they really have come up with this, you know, to be an open education steward, um, you have to contribute, um, give that conspicuous attribution, um, release control, right? We know it's hard sometimes to think about a lesson plan that we've created, that we've used to release it out there to, for everyone to see. And then we also need to work on empowering each other, right? So empowering others to know that they have something valuable to add to the microsite. Um, we would love to have more EC resources on our microsite. Uh, we would love to have more CTE, career and technical. Um, there's big gaps in the arts. Um, we would love to have more of those resources. And we encourage you, if you're out there and you're listening to this and that's one of your areas, please um, you know, share, go open and see and see how you can use it with your group, you know, maybe create a group for your course you're teaching and um, connect with other people across the state to see, you know, who's teaching that same course. And we will continuously improve the system, right? Um, and then I do have the link in here to the presentation to that quality review tools rubric. Um, there's a rubric that's on our that's on embedded within Go Open and see, but there's also a checklist, which is a shorter, easier format. Um, so if you are sharing this and you want to use that checklist, um, that's a great resource to share with other folks in your school and community for them to kind of be thinking as they're looking at resources. Okay, does it meet this box? Does it meet this box? Is it accessible? Um, is it reliable? Those kinds of things. Um, and here's kind of just some screenshots from it. And so here's that checklist where it's the yes or no. And so those are just great questions to kind of always be thinking about 
and having in our minds when we're looking at curriculum resources. All right, so if you would like more um, than these two introduction videos, make sure you uh, complete our badges. We have badges um, for collaboration, curating, and creating. And then we also have monthly webinars that will start in September. Uh, so feel free to chime in on those. The monthly webinars will last an hour and they'll be worth 0.1 uh, CEU credit for digital learning competency credit. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us um, at goopennc at dpi.nc.gov. And uh, thank you so much. And we hope you have a great uh, start to the 2021 school year.